Good morning everyone, it's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Daniel chapter 9, verses 9 and verses 18 to 19. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of all names, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you thanks for another day of life. Dear Lord, uplift our spirits. Even today, as we see that this world is heading to destruction, I pray that we do not um, go after it in so much that we are tied up with the cares of this life, the lust of the flesh, the lust and desires of the eyes, the pride of life and the deceitfulness of riches. Though the world has been set up that some of these things <clears throat> they put in place for us to operate in this world, but nevertheless, you have commanded us to be separate. So dear Lord, give us wisdom and discernment on how to do this whilst we still operate in this world so that we can be um, in this world but not of it. Because at the end of the day, as we said, this is heading to destruction, this, this whole world. So dear Lord, as we ask is for wisdom, understanding, discernment, to navigate all the things that we ought to be doing. Dear Lord, help us in every single situation, every time that we're feeling weak or weary, any time that we feel like giving up, any time that we feel defeated, let us pray that you strengthen us. Keep in the forefront of our minds that your kingdom to come is greater than anything that we can possess in this life, anything at all. So as you have told us, let us seek you first, seek your face, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, which is found in you, Lord Jesus Christ. And everything that we need shall be given unto us, because you have promised us. And dear Lord, I pray that you are speedy and attentive to our prayers in those things that we are in need of. Because you have told us that you know what we need before we ask. So this is why we ask of you, because you are the only one that is able to accomplish our promises. You are the only one that is all-powerful, almighty, all-knowing. And dear Lord, we are not, and we are nothing in comparison to you. We put our trust not in our own self, because <laughs> what can we do without, without your permission? Even the breath in our lungs is by your permission. So let us keep humbling this thing, knowing that you are the one who is in control. And let us keep fearful, knowing that at the end of the day, you are the one that issues blessings and issues curses. And I pray that we are always found in your blessing by doing that perfect, good, acceptable and holy will of yours. And that we may be conformed to the image of your son. And in this, let us not forget that in being conformed to the image of your son, there is suffering in this because you, O oh Lord, suffered for our sake so that we can have that eternal and true riches in the life to come. So as we, as we have told us also, any any unrighteous mammon that you have given us in this life, let us make good use of it in so much that we are still giving you the glory. And as I said, if we are faithful in this, which is, which is the least, when we are with you, you shall commit the true riches unto us. So dear Lord, let us help our brothers and sisters and all those who are in need, because everyone is in need of something. And whether it be something physical or spiritual, help us to help each other in love to show forth that love of Christ to all mankind. Lead us in spirit and in truth always in all things that we do. And as we ask, dear Lord, keep our minds focused on you. Renew our minds, creating us a clean heart. Renew our right spirit within us. As you have said, cast us not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation and the knowledge of knowing you. And lead us unto life everlasting. Dear Lord, help our brothers and sisters in the faith. Each and every one of us. Forgive us of our sins. Lead us in the way of righteousness. Build up the children in the way of truth and the way of righteousness. And in the way that you have taught us, dear Lord. So when they are of age, none of us shall depart from you. We thank you. Lead us in all spirit and in truth in the word this morning to the glory of God our Heavenly Father. Through you, by you, and for you, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 
cool. All right. So Daniel chapter 9 verse 9 says, To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. And 19 to 18, 18 and 19 says, O my God, incline thy ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present for we do not present cur supplications before thee for our righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Amen. Hmm, that curve word. Just like his first, I've seen it already this morning. Unless I overlooked it. Anyway, um, this is a nice book here. The, well, the whole book of Daniel is quite, is quite nice, right? We know that God loved Daniel. He, he, he was very, a very loyal servant to God. If you look at how he operated, he just seemed like he was one servant. If you have a business... And you want an employee what is faithful and doing what you want diligently this is daniel to the to our god right he was a very very diligent servant in that um i think the scripture does say that god god you know god love everyone right he hates um those who do he hates sin obviously and the, and the and the ones who do sin but well he hates sin let's leave it at that he hates sin right so let us not be found in it but as we said the scripture just talk about how he loved daniel right and um in this chapter here it was just speaking about how daniel was looking upon the state of his people and he saw the sins that he, he didn't exclude himself he said he's praying for his sins and the sins of the people and he said a nice prayer to the lord here in and he was um doing so beforehand he was in supplication he was in fasting right and he said he was with um sack in sackcloth and with ashes right so in verse 9 here this was just a part of the prayer and it says to to the lord god be belong mercies and forgivenesses though we have rebelled against him because you have to think about it everything that the lord has done from the beginning of time he's justified in doing it and somebody might ask, oh, but how was he justified when he wiped off the slate, wiped the slate clean in the days of Noah? That is one line as I mostly see, like, say, an atheist or somebody who does, does not believe in God used to justify why they don't serve God. Because it's like, oh, I can't worship a God that would destroy a whole, a whole, the whole earth and only save eight people. But nevertheless, they might forget this, the, the thing that was written before that the intent the imagination of the heart of men were only evil continually right so he was justified because he has told us from the beginning that the wages of sin is death he told adam he set before you life and death he set before adam in that day life and death the tree of life and the tree of death the tree of death was the tree of knowledge of good and evil because as he said if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Right? So he set before him life and death. And he told him the consequences of both. He said, eat of every one of them freely, but don't eat of the one that will cause you to die. But mankind still disobeyed. So God is justified because he is judge of all and lord of all. He has given us commandment because he wants to preserve our lives. When we go outside these commandments, then we end up in sin and we go against him. And as we said, the end of sin is death, right? So this was Daniel here just acknowledging that, the, well, him, his, the princes, the kings of the land, the fathers of the land and all the inhabitants have gone astray and sinned against the land. And he was making that supplication to the Lord for forgiveness. As he said, to him belong mercies and forgiveness, right? Because we have rebelled. And if we look at it in today's day, 
I've talked to myself, I talk for myself, right? I don't like talking for people, but I can say 100% I've rebelled against the Lord in so much that I sin, right? And even though I know what is wrong from right, that doesn't mean that I choose what is right all the time. And this is why I do ask for forgiveness of the Lord. And I do pray for forgiveness for my brothers and sisters in the faith and those who are around me, the loved ones, my family, friends, loved ones, all of that, because everyone has fallen short of the glory of God by committing sin, right? So as I said, this is a lovely prayer here, what Daniel was just saying. And if you read the whole thing, it's quite a, a selfless prayer in so much that if you think about it, he was just one man amongst a whole nation. But he was making this, he was earnestly seeking the face of the Lord for the forgiveness of the people of the land and for the desolation that, that has come upon the people of God, right? As he has said there, um, he was in verse 18, he was asking the Lord to incline his ear, his ear and open his eyes and behold the desolation because we know that in the scripture it does speak about God saying he shall turn his face away from the people. And if you think about it, if God is light and God is love, right? And he said his glory shall shine forth, right? In the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, if he turns away his face, this is him turning away his blessings, his his light, his, sanct his, his um, what word I was looking for? The word slipped me, but his protection and all of that. He's, if we, and if he turns away from, from looking, at, looking out for our cares right then the only thing that's left is darkness if he turns away that true light from us then there's only left the darkness and destruction and we can't forget that our adversary the devil is just looking for who he can see kill and destroy right so this is why i said this prayer is quite a selfless prayer because he's not just praying for himself he's praying for the whole land the whole people people who have transgressed against the eternal heavenly father who created all things right and um i need to find out what that c-u-r word mean i don't know how i missed that word this morning i would have looked it up but i, re I read over it right and as a, at the latter part of that verse 18 it shows us that we we don't we, we don't we don't have any righteousness of ourselves to present to the Lord like oh Lord look at my righteousness here now give me this no it's because of his mercies that anything is granted unto us because at the end of the day we are deserving of believe it or not we are deserving of death because of the sins that we have committed right God has proclaimed it the wages of sin is death if we sat if we sinned we are deserving of it we deserve we're actually deserving of death but his mercies has come forth and showed forth in so much that he has sent his son in the likeness of us to live a sinless life. The only one that wasn't um, um, deserving of death because he, he did not sin from birth, which is just mind blowing. But um, he used that sinless life for that payment, that eternal payment for all those who have sinned because that in new well, the blessings from the the sacrifice of christ is that he was able to pray and atone for our sins so not that we were righteous in any way but we hold fast his righteousness right and um as this prayer just went on there <laughs> it can show you just this the, the sincereness of this prayer it's like oh lord hear oh lord forgive our oh lord hearken and do not defer and defer not right for thine own sake oh my god for this thy city and thy people are for thy city and thy people are called by thy name and this is what we ask this morning dear lord heavenly father even now the people who are called by your name those who proclaim to be a part of the body the, the body of christ right those who are seeking after you through our and by and for our lord jesus christ we do pray that you hear our prayers you hear you be attentive to us we are not deserving of anything but we are depending and pulling on your mercies because you are the one who is merciful you are the one that is full of mercies and forgiveness 
and we do pray that we don't just do this um hypocritically we want to pull on his mercies but we want to forsake sin and turn away from those things that he hates right so yeah i'll leave it at that this morning everyone it's a nice little prayer read it for yourselves any questions any comments anything you want to add just send them into the word at eachreach1.org and as much as the lord has led me taught me and kept me over the years i'll answer them according to his word according to his principles according to his will being led by his holy spirit so have a blessed day everyone and god's willing definitely we'll catch up again tomorrow